What's up guys? I'm Fabio Salas and welcome to the Living Mad channel where we talk all about the American dream. Today, I want to ask you a question. One simple question. What is your relationship with money? Yes, you. The one watching the video. What is your relationship with money? I'll give you a little, little background on myself. I'm what's called a money mentor. That is, it's, it's a fancy title for something that I do on a volunteer, volunteer service here at the University of Illinois. As a money mentor, I get to help people manage their money. I help them come up with budgets. I help them figure out ways to pay off debt, whether it's student loans, credit card debt, whatever the case may be. Basically, anything that has to do with money, if they need help, they come to us, and it's a service that's provided to the community for free. I tell you that as a segue into this. When I was going through the training for Money Mentor, it, it surprised me how many different personalities were there as part of this training. And these were all people that were volunteering their time to go through this training to become a money mentor, to help people with their money. And throughout the training, we had different scenarios where they would ask us questions such as, would you be willing to charge a vacation on a credit card? Would you be willing to buy a car, cash, or or, or would you rather finance it? Would you, if you had the money, would you finance a house or buy cash? All these different questions all throughout the course. And what I found was there was never a question where all the money mentors agreed, where everybody said, yes, this is what I would do, or no, I would not do that. No matter what the question was, there was always some sort of division. Some people were over here, some people were on the other side, some people were in the middle. And these are all people who were training to become mentors, financial mentors, money mentors. And I thought that was interesting because it really reflects what I'm trying to get to, what I'm trying to get you to answer here is what is your relationship with money? If I ask you, would you be okay paying for a vacation on a credit card? And you instinctively say no, without thinking about anything else, just say no. That could be a number of things. That could be you don't know enough about credit cards. It could be you're afraid of carrying credit card debt. It could be you know you can't afford it, so you're not gonna do it anyway. It could be a number of things. But they all they all reflect back to your idea of money, your idea of debt, your idea of your relationship with money. So when you think about money, does it make does it stress you out? Does it cause anxiety within you? Does it give you fear? Or when you think about money, does it does it foster these ideas of, of what's possible? The things you could do with money, the people you can help with money, the places you can travel to with money. Does it give you does it cause excitement? Or does it cause fear? Does it do you view it as a as a tool that could create opportunities? Or do you see it as a necessary evil that can take it down a bad path? very different perspectives. You might say they're one extreme and the other, complete opposites. But where you fall in that spectrum is important to understanding who you as an individual are when it comes to money. Now there's there's two things, two points that I want you to remember as, as you think about what kind of relationship you want to have with money or what kind of yeah, basically what kind of relationship you want to have with your money. Like any other relationship, you and your money need to have a relationship. So the first thing is, how do you feel about debt? Does debt scare you? And here's the thing, not all debt is bad debt. Now, if you've ever heard of Dave Ramsey, he's, he's one of those guys that doesn't want you to have any debt. He wants you to buy your car cash. He wants you to buy a house cash. If you can't buy cash, he wants you to pay it off within 15 years. Everything he, he advises is about zero debt. But here's the thing. Rich people use debt to their advantage. They don't start businesses with their own money. Even, even millionaires who could start a business with their own money, when they're gonna start a new business, they don't use their own money. They go to banks and get loans. They use private money lenders. 
They start fund trusts or trust funds to raise money. They do partnerships. Maybe they throw in some of their money. Maybe they put up 30, 40% of their money. So if it's a million dollar project, maybe they put up $300,000, maybe half a million dollars. But rarely will you see a rich person finance an entire business. Rarely will you see a rich person but pay cash for, and I'm talking about business people, not not the, the Hollywood movie stars and or people who win the lotto. I'm talking about business people who know how to manage their money, who have accountants, who have tax attorneys, professionals that help them manage their money. I'm talking about those people. They use debt to their advantage. But this is where you gotta understand, there's good debt and bad debt. If you're going on vacation and you're putting it all on your credit card, because you can't afford that vacation, that's bad debt. Not only are you having to pay back the balance, but you're gonna have to pay a lot of interest on that. That's no good. But if you are starting a business, and for whatever reason, you can't get a loan from the bank, maybe you just had a bank bankruptcy five years ago, and that stays on your record for seven to 10 years, depending on which kind it is. Maybe you had a foreclosure, maybe you had your car repossessed. All these things that stay on your credit report and would make it unlikely for you to get a loan from a bank. But now you've got this great idea, you wanna start this business, maybe you only need $10,000. Maybe your business is you're gonna set up vending machines. You just need three vending machines to get you started. And you know that it's gonna work, you've done the research, you've crunched the numbers, you know that in your market, what you're gonna do is gonna work, it's gonna make you some money. So you decide to put it on the credit card. It's a huge risk. If those three vending machines fail, now you gotta pay back the credit card and you don't have the money to pay it back, you're gonna be paying a lot of interest until you can. But if the business succeeds, you're gonna make huge profits. And you'll be able to pay that credit card quickly and more than make up for the interest rate that you pay on the credit cards. Now I'm not saying, I'm not advising for you to go use your credit cards to start a business. I'm just using that as an example. Whether it's a personal loan, a bank loan, credit card loan, there are times when getting a loan when financing something, when using debt, makes sense. One, one little tip, one small trick that can help you remember, is this, is this a good loan or a bad loan? You gotta look at the interest rates. Say you have $10,000 and you wanna buy a car. If you can buy that car and the interest rate is, say, 2% on the, on the new car, say it's 4.5% on a used car somewhere around there. If you can invest that $10,000 and they make you 10% returns annually, now you're making 10% returns on an investment of $10,000, but you're paying say 4.5% interest rate on a car loan. That's a difference of 5.5% per year. So if you are savvy enough to invest your money and get 10% returns, and an index fund, the real estate, which are my two favorite things, but there's a lot of other things out there where you can get 10%. If you, if you can do that, then that's, that's a good opportunity to finance the car, invest the money. Yeah, you're gonna pay, you're gonna be making payments, car payments for however long the term is, four years, five years, and you're gonna pay interest rate on that car. But the interest rate that you're making on this investment will cover the interest rate that you pay on the car and then some. So at the end of those four or five years when the car's paid off, you still have the $10,000, plus you've got the interest that you've made on top of that. So that's the first thing I want you to remember is debt is not always bad. Debt can be a good thing if you're responsible, if you make your payments on time, you stay on top of your finances, and you use it to, to increase your net worth. That's, that's the key right here, it's increasing net worth. We don't wanna take on debt that's just plummeting us more into debt without actually having some sort of benefit. But if it's a loan that's gonna pay you back with interest, a business, an investment, something that's gonna pay you back with interest and it's gonna outweigh the cost of that loan, then that's a good investment, that is good debt. And once you understand that, once you feel comfortable with that, you start to get a little bit closer to having a positive relationship with your money. And the second thing is a simple thing. Just one more thing. You've got to learn to manage your money. If you don't learn to manage your money, your money controls you. And that's not the kind of life you want to live. 
If your money is controlling you, if you don't know how to manage your money enough so that it doesn't cause fear, anxiety, stress within you every time you think about it, you're never gonna get in a better position financially. You've got to learn to deal with those emotions. You've got to learn to manage your money so that your money does not control you. So I ask you again, what is your relationship with money? What do you want your relationship with money to be if it's not the way it should be right now? All right, guys, that's it for me today. If you like this content, if you want to see more of it, go ahead and hit that like button so everybody knows this is good. Hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with the videos I upload. Keep living mad. And I'll see you in the next video.